Hi friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library. Today we're going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag because it's July and it's time. I'll be honest, you've probably been seeing a lot of these because it's mid-year, it's time to do it. I wanted to wait until the last day of June to film mine just in case something came through that could beat my current best year of the book so far. I wanted to give it a full six months to see if we could top it. We didn't, but that's okay because I'm still happy with the best book of the year, which will actually be our first question. Uh, if you don't know what this video is, it's all over the booktubes. It's been going around for years. This is probably my fourth or fifth time doing the video. I don't even know who originally started it at this point. I think it was originally a blog challenge, not a video challenge. And I do believe that there are some different versions going around that have a few different questions. So it's a little bit of everything everywhere. So as I said, we're going to start with my favorite book of the year, so far, and that has to be Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. I loved this book. I want to reread it right now, but I have so many more books that I need to read, especially chonky books by this guy. So yeah, I loved this book. I loved the magic system. I loved the world. I loved Brandon's writing. I think, so this was the first of the Cosmere that I read. I had previously read the Steelheart trilogy plus the novella, but this was the first part of the Cosmere that I read and I loved it. So far I've only additionally added in the Final Empire, but also loving that. Uh, the Mistborn trilogy, I only put one book in, but loving it so far. So I think this deserves the spot as my best book so far this year based off of A, its rating. It was one of the highest ratings of the year, but also because it really was like a jumping off point for me this year. Uh, I decided I wanted to read a Cosmere book every month or a Brandon Sanderson book every month. And I dove right into this one in January and had a fantastic time. I loved the characters. I loved the world. I loved the magic. I loved the heart of the story. I love Raiden and Sereni. I think they were fantastic characters. I loved seeing the way that they were like separate characters throughout the entire book because their perspectives are separate and they're not in the same place at the same time. The way that they were like a mirror of each other, even though they weren't together and didn't really know each other was so well done. I had a fantastic time. It's one of those things where like I could never say enough about this book because it was so good but also there's so much out there already that's being said about it that I feel like I don't need to say anything because if you're here and you're on booktube and you read fantasy I'm sure you've heard of Brandon Sanderson and so like you don't need me to yell about it to you but I'm just saying like so far my favorite book of the year. In fact as I put it back on the shelf I'm gonna put it face front. A because I have a lot of empty space and B because well it's not the best cover in the world but I do like it. Another book that was a contender for the best book of the year but I decided to save it for best sequel of the year was The Gifts That Bind Us by Caroline O'Donoghue. This was the sequel to my favorite book of 2022, All Our Hidden Gifts. I love this series. These books follow our main character Meeve, her friends Ro and Fiona and Ro's sister Lily who used to be Meeve's best friend but isn't anymore. Meeve learns that she is able to use tarot cards to tell people's future but when she's reading but when she's reading Lily's future she actually pulls a card that no one's ever heard of before called the Swamp Witch. It's not a Swamp Witch. Housekeeper. I feel like she's a Swamp Witch but the housekeeper and please housekeeper I did not mean that in a derogatory way I think swamp witches are cool please don't come for me the housekeeper card and the housekeeper card takes Lily essentially uh, and does something with her that you will find out in the first book this series deals a lot with racism in Ireland where these characters are from and also a group called the children of Brigid that are basically um, like these white supremacist pieces of trash who are against anybody who's not white, um, against anybody who is on the LGBTQ spectrum, that anybody that is not like a middle-aged white dude basically is their nemesis. Not necessarily because there are women in the Children of Bridget as well, 
but they're all still pieces of shit. So the series deals a lot with magic and with a lot of like very serious heavy topics but also teenagers having fun and hormones and fantasy world and magic and just it's one of the best things I've ever read. I had a fantastic time. I absolutely loved it. Excited to get to the third book hopefully soon. Next is your favorite reread. I don't think this has been my only reread of the year but it is the only book that I reread every year and that is semi Defend Under the Bliss of Worst Nightmares by Crystal Sutherland. This is my favorite book of all time. Will that change over time? Probably. Will I one day be like I don't know why I love that book so much? Probably. Have I read this book six times? Yes. Have I read it at least once every year for the last five years? Twice in the first year. Actually twice the first month I read it. Also, yes. This book follows twins Esther and Eugene who come from a family where they believe that their family has been cursed by the Grim Reaper, by death. Uh, essentially they all have a great fear and that great fear will kill them. This book deals a lot with, oh, how do you put it? It deals a lot with mental health issues, mental health struggles, um, suicidal ideation, actual suicide attempts, people's fears of things like agoraphobia, the dark, bees, cats, having bad luck, the dark. It's one of those things where like is it fantasy or is it not and it's up to you to decide if the Grim Reaper is actually a character or like actually the Grim Reaper. Like is he just a dude or is he a character? And because this main character Esther deals a lot with anxiety and because I read this after I started dealing with my anxiety I just really connected to this book on like a really deep personal level. Um, I also dealt with suicidal ideation at the time and because Esther's brother deals with suicidal ideation it just it's one of those things that every time I read this book I weep and it gives me all of the feels and I love it. So if I haven't yelled about it enough to you over the last five years that I'm not doing my job. Also it got this fantastic cover redo last year and I'm in love with it so. The next question is genre you've been reading slash loving the most. Most of what I read this year has been fantasy. I am really still enjoying getting into more horror, more haunted house, more paranormal type books, uh, but I have been reading majority of fantasy. So take that as you will. New releases that I haven't read yet this year, but I want to. The Exiles by Jane Harper. This is the third book in the Aaron Folk series. These are all set in Australia. One of Jane Harper's like magical things that she does is her setting is always a character in her book. It is always very palpable, very present, very well known. And I love that about her books. So I'm excited to see what happens in the exiles and where Aaron Falk is now. These are mystery thrillers. They typically have multiple timelines as far as like in present day and also in the past. And I have enjoyed all of them that I've read so far. I think I've read the first two books in this series as well as I believe two others. So I have been enjoying Harper's works. The other is A Witch's Fate Guide to Di Dying a Daemon. A Witch's Fate Guide to Dying a Daemon by Sarah Hawley. Yee haw. A Witch's Fake Guide to Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. This follows a witch who is like prophesized to be the most powerful witch of all time but she doesn't actually have the most powerful powers of all time and she accidentally summons a demon who wants to give her something in return for her soul and so he's trying to get her to sell her soul to him but she doesn't want to and he only has so much time to do it in but then people find out that like he's like staying there trying to convince her and she doesn't want to tell her family that she accidentally summoned a demon so instead she tells them that they're dating so it's a fake dating trope. Why does he go along with it? I don't know I guess because he wants her soul. Um, does it bring some of uh, not the witch you wed? Where is she? Here she is. Because you know the witch who's supposed to be prophesied to be the most powerful witch but she doesn't actually have powers. Yes it does bring that a little bit. Do I care? No. No I don't care. A because I love not the witch you wed also because demon. So I'm excited to see what happens in this. Most anticipated read for the second half of the year I have two. The first of which is The Hunter's Moon by Susan Dennard, which is the follow-up to The Luminaries. I am, well, it's a Suze book. That's all I need to tell you. It's a Susan Dennard book. I love the Suze. I've got an entire row of Suze books. I mean, obviously, I'm a fan. Um, do I have four copies of The Luminaries? At least. It might be five. One, 
two, three, four. I have five copies of Luminaries and they're all in English. At least my seven copies of Truth Witch aren't all in English. I might have a problem. Maybe. Any who's all. Uh, the Luminaries is Susan's YA fantasy that deals with a family, a group of families, all named after like a day of the week. Our main character Winnie Wednesday is a Wednesday. Uh, her family has kind of been excommunicated but she has a chance on her birthday to be inducted into this group where they hunt and fight down nightmares. Fight down. Yep that's what we're going with. They fight and take down nightmares and uh, when he starts to see some of these weird nightmares that other people haven't seen before or somewhere going on in the forest basically. It was a great story ready to read the sequel. I have an arc of the sequel that Sue sent me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty excited about that. Pretty, pretty stoked. I need to read it. Pronto, you know, The Narrow by Kate Alice Marshall. If you've been here, you know that I am officially a Kate Alice Marshall girly. I love everything from her that I've read so far. Is it only three books? Maybe. No, it's way more than that. Three, four, five, six, six books, maybe seven. I don't know. It's been a lot. I've read her mid-grade, I've read her adult, I've read her YA. She can do no wrong in my opinion at this point. Uh, the Narrow is her YA book that's coming out next. There's also a mid-grade coming out later this year as well. The Narrow follows a girl who lives near like this river called the Narrow where anybody that falls in it drowns and there's been one girl that was able to make it out who didn't drown but she's like excommunicated herself from like all of civilization and this girl for some reason has to go there and like take care of her and then maybe she's haunted I don't remember I just know I'm excited y'all I don't know am I supposed to know probably I'm probably supposed to know my favorite question your biggest disappointment Normally I can like hold up a book that was like, well, it was like a four star, but it wasn't as good as the first book. I can't even, I can't even do that to you right now because my biggest disappointment of the year was this POS, Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. Um, I hate to say that the work and effort that someone put into a book because I know how much work and effort it takes and I know that this is someone's baby and I know that she loved the storyline and I know that she wouldn't have written it if she didn't believe in it but my god is it awful. It is awful. I probably wouldn't even have bought a copy of this if I hadn't pre-ordered it. Like my love for this series is so high. I have all four books in the series. You probably can't see them because they're up there. You can't see them. They're over here. I have the other four books in the series. I've given all of them a five star. I think I gave this like a 2.75. It was rough. It was real rough. Our characters were not our characters. They were like, it was like someone wrote fan fiction of our characters and they just weren't right all the way, you know? And the plot was horrible. Like, <laughs> Stevie always had this way of like, walking into a mystery and seeing these clues that other people didn't see and she was able to solve the mystery from that and I get that but in this book there were no clues there was like two things that happened there was like a guy fumbling around with his keys and a window that was open that's how she solved the mystery like legitimately those are the only two pieces of information that she had and she solved an entire 40 year old mystery with these two tidbits of information I'm sorry it's not possible it's not possible like you can't get from A to Z without everything else in the middle like you don't the alphabet is not A Q Z like it doesn't do that and she was awful she was not herself the end of this book was an atrocity to man it also ended on a cliffhanger the stupidest cliffhanger that I've ever seen in a YA book before in my life and as I'm looking at the, talking about this with you I'm like I don't know what my actual start rating was for this but I feel like I need to go and find out and then take it down a star. Like I'm that viscerally angry about this book still and it's been months so yeah I'm not I'm just not happy with this book at all in any way shape or form. It was it, it was a pop mess and I didn't like it. Will I read the next book? Yes. Will I pre-order the next book? No. Biggest surprise. The Wall by Marlon Haushofer. So we read this for my local bookstores book club. We are reading translated fiction this year. 
most of the books that we've read have been real fucking weird and real not good. And I actually really enjoyed this book way more than I thought I would. This follows a woman who is probably in her mid to late 40s uh, because her children are grown. That's all we know. We don't even know her name. We never learn her name throughout the book. And she is at her cousin's hunting cabin. Her cousin and his wife are there. They are kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, but they go to the town, like the local town, to go out to dinner or go to a bar or something and they leave her at the house. And the next morning she wakes up and no one is there and she's like that's weird they normally come back maybe there was an accident or something maybe they didn't make it back so she starts to walk to town to try to figure out you know what had happened and on her way to town there is a wall the wall actually it's not a thing you can see but you can feel it it's taller than she can climb it goes below the ground it is as wide as she can walk um, it does from her experience go completely around her in a circle. She can at some points in the wall see other farmsteads and what she sees is devastating. Essentially the people that are outside the wall are frozen in time. Um, also animals frozen in time and eventually as this book takes place over a long time period uh, those bodies start to deteriorate, fall over, collapse, do whatever. Um, and it's really just a story about survival and her trying to discover the kind of person that she is, how she's going to survive here. She does a lot of like very redundant type things like planting potatoes and cutting hay and talking to cats and a dog and cows and it's, there's a lot of that. And somehow I still really enjoyed this book. I thought it was fantastic. Um, it really gives you a good focus on the view of man um, and how like the worst thing in this world, the worst thing to happen to the world that we're on is us. And it is, it was a great read. It was a very interesting read. Definitely something that I would recommend to people who like literature, who like to kind of read things about like end of the world kind of stuff where you never really get an answer because there is no answer about where the wall came from. Um, but I had a fantastic time. Very surprising read for me. Didn't expect to love it and I did. The next question is a fave new author which is a debut author or a new to you author. Um, I looked through my list and there were two authors that I read from this year that I read two books from each that I really enjoyed and that is Kimberly Fleming and Trisha Levenseller. So Kimberly Fleming wrote the That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon and That Time I Got Drunk and Flung. Nope. You did a love potion at a werewolf. It's a long one. These were fantastic. They were obviously fantasy, smutty, a good time, goofy, very funny. Like you have to enjoy the humor that's in these to enjoy them and I did and I had a good time. Uh, Daughter of the Pirate King I read in a couple of days and then immediately the next day read all of Daughter of the Siren Queen. Loved them, had a fantastic time. I was like wow I wish there was more of these and then I realized there's in fact a new book coming out later this year. Uh, it doesn't follow the same main characters, it doesn't follow Alosa and what's her love interest name? R -r 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 Raiden? Raiden. Raiden? His name's Raiden. It's not on here, I don't see it. I see Draxon which is Raiden's brother. I'm going with Raiden, I think that's his name. Anyway, Alosa and write in follows them but the new book follows her first mate from this series and her love interest so I'm excited to read those and when you see my TBR takedown you may see another cover of this book series because I did a thing um, but yeah I really enjoyed both of these two books from these two authors so I will definitely read more from both of them in the future. The next question I also have two answers for it is your newest favorite character. So my fun answer because I had to have a fun answer like when I like what is your who was your newest favorite character and I immediately was like cheese. I love cheese. Cheese from Witchlings. He's actually uh, more prominent in the second book which is the Golden Frog Games which I do not own a copy of. Um, yet but I do own a copy of the first book of the series. Cheese is a raccoon okay. Hey, he's a raccoon. His name is Cheese and he's hilarious. He saves this girl's life on multiple occasions. Him and his raccoon pals. They're hilarious and I love them. Um, I actually uh, sent Clarabelle a, 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 a TikTok really thing. I don't know if it was a TikTok or a reel. I don't know where I, wherever I was um, of like this guy who was talking about his best friends who are raccoons and like he had named them all and I was like oh my gosh it's Seven. Like it's 100% Seven who is the main character um, with Cheese and her other raccoon friends. Anyway 
Cheese is great. I love him. He's a great character. I mean, all of the characters in here are great, but the raccoons are the best characters. You could fight me on that. My serious answer, however, is Talia from the Heralds of Valdemar. So I read this entire trilogy this year. I think I read it over a two month period. I think I read some in February and some in March or it was January, February. I don't know. Uh, but I read it very close together. This trilogy is a fantasy. I think it was originally published in the 1980s. It'll tell me. Uh, 1987. 1987 and 1988, uh, which 1987 was the year that I was born. So this book is as old as I am. And I had a fantastic time reading this series. It is a world where the queen has these specific people who are basically her protectors. They are the heralds. And Talia is a her a young herald who goes through school. And this book follows a, a good chunk of her life. So we see her coming to the school learning about the world because where she comes from, she comes from this religious sect where they don't really believe in any of this. But she goes to the school, she learns how to be a herald, she learns where her place is in the herald society, which is a very interesting place. Um, we see her go out on adventures, we see her become a very important person to the queen. And we see her go through a lot of battles and some really hard times. We see her find love, we see her lose one of the most important people to her. Um, it was a fantastic story and I loved every second of it. Um, there are a lot more books in the Heralds of Aldemar world, um, but there is one particular that follows some of these same characters and I know Talia is in it as well. I do plan to read that probably not this year, probably won't get to it until next year. Um, but I love Talia, I love the series, and I want to read more from Mercedes Lackey in the future. Book that made you cry? Make a Wish by Helena Hunting. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember why this made me cry. But I know that my review says that I sobbed for the last third of this book. So whatever it was, I have blocked it out. <laughs> whatever it was that was so detrimental to me, I was like, I can't handle that emotion, and I got rid of it. I just yeeted it into the atmosphere and was like, I don't need it, it's fine. I know that this is part of a trilogy, um, the Spark Sisters trilogy, the other two are right here. They are When Sparks Fly, Sorry I Love, and Make a Wish. Follow three sisters, Spark Sisters. Each sister has a book. Each sister finds love in a different book. Start with the middle sister, then the older sister, then the youngest sister. And their parents are dead, so it's sad, which is probably what made me cry. I don't know, um, but I know it made me cry. That's all I remember. Book that made you happy. Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. This is the fourth book in the Well Met series. This book follows the cousin of the hero from book three, the kind of sort of love interest from book two. I know that's weird, but I promise you it would make sense if you've read the other books. What made me happy about this book is that book three was very much not set at the Renfest at all and book four was all at the Renfest. She was traveling at the Renfest and it was just all Renfest all the time. The sex scenes were spicy my friends. Um, I loved the romance but if I'm being honest this is more of women's fiction than actual romance but I'm okay with it because I had a great time so it was it was very good and I liked it very much. I said earlier you were gonna see another cover of this book later uh, but I was wrong. You're going to see another cover of it now. The next question is most beautiful book that you've bought this year. And that, my friends, goes to Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. There are new covers for this series. Um, this one actually just came out this week. It has sprayed edges. It's gorgeous. It's lovely. We love her. The second book will be coming out next month. I've already pre-ordered it. And the third book I think comes out in August. I've also pre-ordered that. Love these covers. They're fantastic. Having the best time with these. The next question is books you need to read by the end of the year. For that I'm going to send you to the cards for my these books will self-destruct in 12 months video. I'm sure there are books on there that I need to read that I haven't read yet. I don't know what they are. I've kind of blocked them all out at this point which means they probably won't get read but you can go watch it and find out. And then the last question is your favorite video you've made so far this year. And as always, my favorite video of the year has been my reading vlog of Delicious Monsters by Lizelle Sanberry. I love doing reading vlogs for these. A, because I love Lizelle. She's my friend. I love to read her books. B, I always like to release these on release day because it's fun for me. And it's 
honestly being my friend is the only motivator for me to actually do release day vlogs because I hate to vlog like you know how much I hate vlogging if you've been here you know it's not my jam um, but I do these because friendship and I always cry Lizelle somehow even though she writes these spooky books always manages to make me cry I sobbed it was a fantastic time you can watch me cry on camera so it was my favorite video of the year so far so that is it that is all of the questions that I have again some people have different questions some people have more some people have less these are the ones that I have in mine uh let me know in the comments below if you have also done a mid-year book freak out tag video because I would love to check it out I love seeing where everybody's at for the year if you made it this far in the video leave me a cow emoji if there's no cow you can leave any other farm animal or just leave your favorite farm animal but cows are preferred that is all I have for today I post reading writing book and planner related content a couple of times a week if you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below and until then I will see you guys next time Bye!